Oh, there it is. Uh, so El Kelk then is an Arabic term which means coming into being and is used when referring to the fertilized ovum or zygote. Here you can see the uh, nuclei from the sperm and the ovum uniting to form a new cell which is the zygote or nutfa and uh, then uh, here's the zygote or nutfa again but it's just getting ready to divide into two cells which we call the dividing zygote or the dividing nutfa. The next stage, El Takdir, which is the same verse that was just repeated. This Arabic term means the determination of characters and appears to refer to the fact that from the beginning, the zygote or nutfa contains genetic factors in the chromosome, contain the genes, which determine the color of the future person's eyes hair and skin and all its other characteristics such as the appearance of the face and the body. El Harth, uh, Surah El Begera, uh, 223, your wives are as a tilth unto you. This Arabic term refers to the plowing of the earth and the sowing of the seed in it. This term is used in reference to sexual intercourse, plowing and implantation of the blastocyst sowing of the seed. This analogy is a very good one since the blastocyst develops root-like structures called chorionic villi which derive oxygen and nutrients from the mother's blood just as the roots of the plant shown here uh, derive their nutrients from the soil. Next uh, is Alaka. Let's have the next slide. Uh, Alaka is uh, Surah al Muminim Ayah 14. Then we created the drop into a leech like structure. Then, of that leech like structure, we made a chewed like substance. Uh, Alaka refers to a leech like appearance, especially at about 22 days, as shown in this slide. This is a leech, and this is the human embryo, about 23 days. I think you have to agree that the similarity between these uh, structures is amazing and that it is truly, the human embryo is truly leech-like. The leech-like embryo is attached to the chorionic sac which is embedded in the maternal blood and attached to the maternal endometrium or the lining of the uterus. This is uh, the mudga stage from Surah al muminim Ayah 1-14 and I repeated that before, then we created the drop into a leech-like structure. Then of that leech-like structure, we made a chewed-like substance, which you can see here, and begins during the sixth week. Next uh, stage is uh, Al-Kissa Bil Lan, Surah al Mu Minan Ayah 14. Then we close the bones with flesh. So in the previous stage, then we had the bones, and then we covered the bones with flesh. So this Arabic term means a clothing uh, with flesh, and after the bones form, they become surrounded or clothed by flesh or muscles, which acquire attachments to them. These muscle attachments permit movements of the skeleton to occur. Now this is the final stage of development called al -Nasha. Uh, then we developed of him another creation. Uh, Anasha means uh, growth or coming into being. This undoubtedly refers to the fetal period when there is growth and differentiation of the embryo that developed in the embryonic period. The rate of body growth during the fetal period is remarkable, especially between the ninth and sixteenth weeks. Next uh, stage is El Kablia. This Sarah says that the duration of pregnancy and separation is 30 months. This uh, Arabic term refers to the viability or ability of the human fetus to survive outside the uterus. There is no definite time when survival of the fetus is assured, but it is generally accepted now that a fetus that is 24 weeks or older has a reasonable chance of survival. Survival of fetuses 22 to 24 weeks old has only been become possible in the last few years. 
uh, and better methods of providing care for premature infants uh, were developed. So uh, the period uh, viable embryo or fetus would be here at 24 weeks. We used to say 26, 28, but now with better incubation, uh, some babies at 24 weeks can survive. And we've even had some at 22 weeks, but this takes highly sophisticated incubation uh, to do that. So this uh, period then is the uh, period of uh, viability or the ability of the human fetus to survive. The next stage is the al Hadana, al Rahimia. This uh, stage refers to the final stages of fetal development in the uterus when the fetus could survive if born prematurely. But it remains in the uterus where it is supported or nourished by the mother. In most cases, therefore, the uterus acts as an incubator for the premature infant. Weight gain during these final weeks is phenomenal as the fetus accumulates fat and is gradually prepared for birth. This last uh, ayah is Sura Abasa, ayat 19 and 20. From a drop, he created him and immediately planned and programmed him. Then he makes his passage easy. This uh, Arabic term uh, means to make the passage easy. It is well known that as the time of birth approaches, the maternal tissues of the cervix and the joints of the pelvis become looser so that the passage of the fetus through the fetal canal will be facilitated. This process, initiated by hormones in the mother's blood, accelerates during the early stages of labor or delivery of the baby. As the amniochorionic uh, sac, that is the bag of waters surrounding the baby, expands near the time of birth, it protrudes into the cervix, that is the neck of the uterus, and causes it to dilate. When the amniochorionic sac ruptures, the amniotic fluid provides a slippery pathway for the fetus to pass along the cervix and vagina to the outside of its mother. All the above occurrences facilitate the birth of the baby, that is, they make the passage easy. The stages of embryonic and fetal development mentioned in the Quran should be used when teaching Muslim students because they are in accordance with our modern understanding of the development before birth. It will also enable Muslim doctors and nurses to explain human development to their patients using Quranic references. Muhammad could not have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Muhammad by the one known who knows all about us, not only about how we developed, but how we live and function. Thank you very much.